the section is about creating a web component using uh, uh, using Svelte. So first of all, uh, if you are going to create a web component, we need to um, use some tools like uh, VS Code, which is a code editor. So if you guys want the link of this slide, I will copy paste in the message app. You can go ahead and uh, click on the link and uh, download VS Code, uh, Node.js, and Git. So just search for VS Code download and click on the download link, first link, and you can uh, download the download your Mac or Windows version. So. One sec. Try this. So uh, first of all, uh, download the VS code, and that that's what we are going to use to uh, code and the Node.js, which is a uh, uh, JavaScript run runtime. So and then download the git so you have to download these three things um after git is a tracking a version tracking for your code um svelte is a compiler so what uh, what does the cell do is it will take the dot svelte file and convert to dot js file so you will see when when i will when i show you so after that uh, github and we are, we are going to publish the code using github and js deliver and uh, um we are going to get as a your server server in a url so these are some useful command if you are not familiar with terminal so you can uh, you can use this following code to move around uh, to open folder close folder and create file so let me go ahead and create and show you guys so cd means change directory so if you if you go, if you want to create a folder, you can say mkdir, which is make directory in Mac. This same command is work in Mac OS. If you are using Windows, you need to download the Git Bash. So, to mkdir means create a directory and uh, followed by the uh, name of the folder. In, in our case, we, we are just gonna say folder name. So mkdir folder name will create a folder. To show all the list of folders we have in this directory, we can say ls. Uh, uh, if you can, uh, you see this uh, folder is created folder name. To move inside the folder, uh, and this is the folder we created. So, to move inside the folder, we can say cd and uh, followed by the name of the folder. So, we can create a file using t touch. So, index.txt. And uh, to open this folder in notepad, you can say notepad and uh, followed by the file name. So, index.txt. So it's in a notepad and uh, you can write something and save this file and use cat to show the file content of the file so it will log out something so this is just to show you the navigation using the terminal so it will be useful when you're uh, writing code in using the vs code so let's move on to next. So uh, using good uh, using Git. So in uh, Git, there are some uh, some some uh, terminology like Git stage, which means select a file. Git commit means um, save this file, and uh, Git push means upload, and Git pull means download. Just remember this. Uh, you are going to see this at the end of the section when we use GitHub. So. Let's start with intro to web component. So what's a web component? Um, so web component is a widget. Let me open this up. Let me open my code editor here. Uh, 
uh, you can see this dot uh, html file and dot main js file so in this file uh, we have a hello world which is in this case it's a web component so we can build a similar tag use uh, we can build a tag special tag using web component and uh, to build that uh, we are going to write some functions class based components so if you go to the main.js file you can see that uh, the, uh, we define a custom element and uh, we pass a tag name so this name should be similar to uh, the, uh, the tag yeah so after the tag name is uh, specified the second parameter is uh, passing the class so uh, we are going to pass the hello world class which extend the html element and um, if you extend this uh, html uh, if you extend the class we are, we are going to need super so so just follow along i will tell you a better way to write this so after that we are going to create a shadow root so inside the shadow root we are going to add a html tag and p tag so if i open this in in the live server you can see there is a p tag with the hello world if i inspect this and there is our body and inside there's a widget hello world uh, so this is the web component we have created um inside there there is a shadow root so all the web component uses shadow root uh, to to your um that's where they uh, that's where the uh, web component uh, files or live so inside the shadow root you can see the style and the p tag so if you see uh, here we are uh, updating the inner html of the shadow root so if you see this file it's um it's a little confusing because there are lots of um uh, inputs we, we are going to use so we need to use class we need to extend the uh, super using the con uh, constructor and we then need to attach the shadow so this all the issue with the component um so that's why uh after that i have to use the svelte so in svelte we can just say in one line that svelte option tag so hello well so this one line is equal to this uh, file line so this file lines so after that you can see there's a p tag and a style tag similar to similar to the file so another one thing benefit using the svelte is uh, svelte uh, your code editor can detect uh, what type of uh, what uh, your intelligence so if if you're writing a css here if you if you open your uh, intelligence you, uh, the code editor will suggest you suggest uh, the appropriate options so if the, the code editor will know that it's a p tag so you can have align items and center you can add this add this and uh, if it's a under un, un, under p tag you can say class and uh, it knows wh uh, what you are trying to do so in case of um, in case of plain uh, web component so this is how you build a web component with uh, using the javascript so the code is the code is all over the place so you can see there's a css here we have html here so this is what uh, this is the issue of the web component so just a simple uh, intro so web component is a small widget using the shadow dom as you see here so and the shadow dom extend html is an isolated element so whatever you uh, whatever css here don't affect the site and uh, in index html so that's the plus point of web component and you can do almost anything with it so advantage of web component is it's it has a high performance when compared to um wix elements can exit any type of js code can communicate with job uh, code with js uh, it's better than iframe so in case of five frame uh, it has a, it has a fixed height um in case of a component you can specify whatever height you need you can do in almost anything as i said so the cons of a component is it's difficult to manage the code as you see in this uh, in this small hello world sample and the code is all over the place so this uh, we have css here we have html here and it's 
really hard to manage a very large code base. So we cannot use IntelliSense because the code editor uh, actually don't know uh, what type of uh, text is this. But in case of Silt, it uh, it understand we we use extension, but it understand that um, if it's a color uh, font, font type, font size. So what you're trying to do here. So that's a bigger benefit when you try to write uh, more code. So web component. So all the all the JS, HTML, and CSS are going to be in one single file. So it leads to a spaghetti code, which uh, which will be very harder to maintain in future. So it's a class based, not a function based, which is a, uh, which is an issue in my case. So I don't prefer uh, class based. Um, yeah. So we intro to Svelte. So why Svelte? Uh, why we are going to use Svelte in our case? So Svelte again focus on high performance. So it has syntax that is easy to use, well documented, reactivity in HTML and also in JS. What do I mean by that is, if I go to Svelte, what do? So this is the official Celt website. So they they focus on reading, write less code, no virtual DOMs. So virtual DOM is a um, which uh, React and Vue use virtual DOMs. The problem with virtual DOM is the output bundle is very large when compared to when comp when compared to Svelte. So truly really reactive. So that's what I'm going to show here. So the React view and the Svelte. Uh, uses the uh, US uses the term uh, state and reactivity. What that means is, so we have a sample here app dot svelte. So in this app dot svelte, there is a variable in the script. So uh, whatever the value in this uh, variable is, it going to be render uh, the HTML tag. So for example, if the variable changes, it's going to check for the changes and auto update the HTML. You don't need to say, uh, you don't need to select the H1 tag and you don't need to uh, update the uh, update the H1. So that's what they mean by reactivity. So that's a, a huge benefit and you can write very less code with this. So for example, let me create an input element and uh, we can use bind to bind the value of this input element with the uh, name variable. Now I, I generated a name. So whatever we're going to change here is going to update in the H1 tag, as you see here. So you're going to update the H1. So that's what they mean by reactivity. So you don't need to specify. Uh, you don't need to specify. You need to sell. By by traditional way, you need to select the uh, H1 tag. Then you need to update the text content uh, with the uh, with the actual variable. So with Svelte, uh, they with knows when to change the variable. You just need to specify um, curly bracket curly bracket inside the name. So do you guys have any question or doubt? Okay, um, let's continue then. So, again, it uses less code. The code is intuitive. It's a compiler. Um, I, will, I will talk about it later. What's a compiler? So, compiler means um, when you run npm run build, it will uh, it will compile on the build stage. So. And the output of the code will be very less code, and uh, that's a plus point if using the compiler. So roll up using uh, tree shaking. Uh, if you have unused npm uh, imports, I uh, going to remove that by default. So it's a component based. The uh, you can easily manage the uh, Svelte file. So you can import the Svelte file. So it will be on a different file, and uh, it will be easy for you to. I manage it so it supports champion you can install almost any npm package so let's build it so first of all uh, def um, I showed you what's what does the statement is so that's done 
and uh, uh, using we have used the bind and next is if else statement in component so let me open a repl here let's clear this out so we have a variable named check and if the check is true we are going to show a uh, P tag if it's false we are going to show the check this false so to write the if condition you can say uh, the syntax of this if condition is if and uh, followed by the condition if the condition is true you're going to display order text in this area if the condition is false you can you can add a else here and it will run on the line 10 so for example um take this too so in this case our condition is checked so if it's true we are going it's going to output check this too if it's false we're going to say it's false so now we can bind this uh, with an input element. So input um, bind checked. So if this is true, you're going to update check this true if it's if you click it will auto bind it will bind this with the if condition this this is how it works it will bind the checked value with the variable if the checked value is updated you're going to update this variable if it's true or false um so you're going to check uh check this condition and uh, show the relevant um relevant html so this is how we write if uh, if else condition is filled and uh, Swelt also have a for each loop. So in this case, let's say we have an array of um, uh, fruits. And let's remove this. So in case of um, in, for each loop, and the each syntax start with the same curly bracket hash each and uh, pause the array as element. So element in this case is a variable and the each loop end with slash each. So uh, we can say a p tag and element. So this will list all the elements. So you can uh, go ahead and learn more about Svelte from this samples tab. And they have very good documentation of how to use uh, all this, all their uh, inbuilt features, like each block, uh, which I just showed you. So props, dispatch, and store. If you have multiple component, uh, you're going to need a props uh, dispatch and store. Um, so let's create a, another component here. So let's use, let's import this component and say import. And from here, um, what props? What does props mean is, so we have this um, array, and we can use export to export this as an prop. So and you can just specify array equal to, and you can pass the value from here. So text here, something like that. So 
So props means that um, if you have an inner component, you need to, and you, you have a parent component here. So you need to pass some value to the child component. You can just use props to export that variable, and uh, you can uh, you can update the uh, update the variable by using by just passing here. So that's that's the use of a props. And uh, there's another one thing we need to show you is dispatch so dispatch is whenever something happened in a child component you need to update uh, you need to update the parent component based on that that's when um, dispatch is used so create event uh, Let's say if um, if someone clicked on the P tag, so we can just listen. The pressing on is to click, and then uh, we are going to write a function to dispatch. So this is how we are going to alert the alert the parent component using dispatch. So we can just go ahead and listen. Go on. So if someone clicked here, someone clicked here, you can just see the console and you can handle the, you can handle uh, using the dispatch. And store, uh, store is a very complex, uh, and for uh, for now we are going to skip it. Uh, store is very similar to bind, but um, it's going to, um, if you have multiple component, you need to you need to share the variable uh, to the multiple component you can use store for that purpose so uh, let's build a uh, multiple drop down so to do that uh, first i have this uh, boiler plate repo in my github i'm going to clone that and clone in times means just download Let me clone here. So get clone and follow by the URL. I'm going to rename to drop multiple. I'm going to delete the dot git file. Let's open the VS code here. So I have this boilerplate uh, where I have configured the swell to so it is a single page application, so it doesn't meant for to build a custom element, but we can configure uh, Swell to use um, to output the file as a custom element. So by passing custom element through, uh, I going to output and uh, output the dot Swell to file into one single dot js file, and you can see dot the file in your in the dist slash index dot js file. So let's close this. Let me remove all the unnecessary file.
So run npm install after after git clone. You need to uh, run npm install. It will download all the files and uh, in the node modules all the necessary spelled file. After uh, after all the file is installed, you can run npm run dev, uh, which will uh, run up the local server and uh, and it will try. It will check if some if the file is changed. It will check and update the uh, local server. So it will be easy for you to um, create and uh, write the code. npm run dev you need to specify the tag the html tag in our case it's going to say drop multiple so let me go ahead and remove this uh, script file and Rename this to drop multiple. So yeah, so after you run npm run dev, npm run dev, dev for development, it's going to uh, it's going to run a server in localhost 5000, and uh, and you can you can just uh, inspect this page. You can see there's a drop multiple, which is uh, the web component, and inside that there's a shadow root, and inside that there's a h1 tag. So now we can write a Svelte file, and uh, the compiler will uh, convert it into mine.js file. You can see the output file in builder.js. So under public slash builder slash bundle.js, you can see there's uh, uh, there's this long file. Uh, which is just the output of the compiler, so you don't need to no, no, you don't you don't need to understand this, so you can just close it. And after the file is uh, compiled, after after you develop uh, after you develop this, you can just go ahead and say npm run dist. So uh, this will output the file in the dist folder. So So you can copy the whole code. Uh, open your v uh, open your Wix and uh, and drag and drop the custom element under the add more section. After you drag and drop the custom element, you can go ahead and select the source, select the coded file, and you know uh, if if you don't have the custom element uh, folder, it's going to ask for you to create a custom element. When you click that button. It will create a folder, and uh, you can create a file name, name dropdown multiple.js or anything, and paste the uh, copied code from the VS dist uh, file. After that, uh, you you need to select the select the source of the file, 
which on our case is drop down dash multiple and the tag name the tag name is what you specify in the app dots field so this drop dash multiple So it's going to uh, it's going to render hello world for now. Do you guys have any other question? Any any question? I have a question. Are you available for private tutoring? Because I really want to learn this like in and out. You know, like so I could do it as fast as you can. Because I'm impressed. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, sure. You can uh, private message me. Uh, we can we can do something. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I will continue from here. So, uh, the aim of this, uh, uh, the aim of this is to build a drop down with a multiple option. So to do that, uh, so. We need a div and so we just select an option. We can add a style here. Something is off. So this is our dropdown. Let's spin up the local server. So npm run dev. So we have a uh, we have a div here. So we are going to format it as an input element. So to do that, we have to give a width of a 40 pixel uh, border with uh, one pixel solid, um, and followed by the color. Let's also give a border radius uh, with uh, three pixel. Make it two fifty and height of a forty pixel. Let's give a font size with uh, uh, one twenty percentage. So in our case, one two twenty m. So this will make a uh, font size lead on uh, 20% larger. And after that, um, we need to show the option. So to do that, we need to create a script file. And we have this option with a uh, uh, option, which will take a array of uh, object with a value. Um, string table similar to X element and uh, select it which is uh, true or false. So if it's selected, it's going to show a blue color. If it's not, if it's going to show a um, white with black text. So let's, uh, let's write uh, if, uh, each loop. So to, that, to do that, we need to say each same syntax option. We need to pass the array and the value. Uh, so this will take the array and for e for each array, there should be an element, and the element is uh, created as a variable option. So let's end this loop with slash each. We're going to create a div 
uh, with a class option. So which takes option dot uh, label. So for now, let's for testing, let's create a dummy label. So value label. Okay. Go to the file. Okay, it's going to output the output the an option for us. So that's good. And let's let's add some style to this uh, option. So we are going to say option. We we are going to select the option and. We are going to give 250 pixel width, same as the drop down. Uh, the border with one pixel solid black. And uh, height, I don't think we need height. So, yeah, it's option. It's our option. So we have our option. So we are going to have a pointer cursor. So cursor is to pointer. And we are going to wrap uh, the option around the div. So let's do that. And uh, now what you are going to do is when we click on the drop down, uh, we are going to show or hide the option here. So to do that, we are going to use an if condition. So uh, we don't we don't need a if condition. We, we are just going to toggle uh, toggle this option to do this. And we need a variable uh, which will have true or false. If it's true, it's going to show the option. If it's false, it's going to hide it. So Let's write an if condition. So if uh, show option is true, uh, show the div. So if it's true, it's going to show. If it's false, it's going to hide. So now what you are going to do is when we click on this drop down, uh, you are going to toggle the uh, show option. So to do that, you can say on click here. And curly bracket inside the curly bracket, we need to we can write a function or we can call a function. Let me remove that. So it's just a arrow function here, and we are going to take this value. If it's true, we're going to say false. If it's false, we're going to say true. So that's why we need to put um, exclamatory. So if you click here, you're going to toggle it. Same. So also we are going to have a cursor pointer cursor. So for now I'm going to um, I'm going to stop right here because I don't want to over complicate this and. Uh, I just want to show you what we can do with felt and what we can uh, uh, what we can build. So for now, um, that's uh, that's how, how much code I'm going to say and uh, I'm going to uh, publish this code and GitHub and uh, how we can retrieve this uh, code. So let me stop the local server. Uh, npm run this uh, will output the uh, will output the in Svelte file and convert the Svelte file into one index.js file. So if you go index.js, you can just go ahead and copy this code. You don't need to understand this code. This just and go to your drop down dash multiple JS. I remove this code and just paste it. And after that, um, when you view this page. It should have a drop down. 
you can just add more style to look uh, neat. I just want to show you what we can build. So that's it. So let me um, push this code to GitHub. So I'm to, going to create a new repo. Yeah. Just follow along with the uh, with the with the instructions. So we are going to say git init. So git init it will initialize. A, it will create a dot git file and a git add will add all the file to the changes and. Uh, git commit uh, followed by the message to save this file so let's say we are going to say first commit here after that is done we are going to add uh, add this repo add this remote origin just copy and paste it and copy the next line So git in it, uh, git add dot cause we, we are going to add all the files here. So you need to say git add dot instead of readme.md. So git commit dash m so your miss first message and uh, git remote and the git push. So after it's been pushed, you can refresh this page and it's going to show all the file here. And now we are going to use JS deliver. Um, Uh, which is a uh, uh, what it does is it going to pull the fill uh, pull this uh, just the slash index file uh, from this github and uh, Serve you in a URL. So We go github My username is Salman2301 and the name of the repo Is drop multiple WC So you can see all the files similar to the GitHub. You can go ahead and click the register file under index.js file. And you can see uh, it's it going to serve the file here for us. So you can copy this link, uh, go to your Wix, uh, click on the choose source. So instead of uh, query file, now you can uh, use server URL and uh, is that here and click update and also you need to update the tag name so for for here we are we specify drop dash multiple that's it so you can preview it you can go ahead and test it if you want to know um, if you want to see the full capability of uh, uh, Svelte uh, you can uh, Check my alert component uh, link. So this one I built using Spilt uh, yeah, a few mo uh, one month ago. You can see if I click show alert. Let's wait for the site to be loaded. So what you see is, is here is a web component. So build with felt similarly. So you can find all the code here. So similar and the, it uses a similar setup. So under source, uh, you can find find the app dot and all the code. Think um, 
that's it uh, that's it i want that's all i want to show you guys